everybody it's Angela again today welcome back to my channel I hope you're all doing well the weather's going fabulously not too much rain or not too hot <laughs> um, I just want to say before I get going today thank you ever so much to everybody for their wonderful comments and support that you um, send to me on a regular basis uh, it doesn't go unnoticed and it means so very much to me so I just wanted to say that and of course welcome to you all whether you're a new subscriber or a long-standing one I appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much for joining me now today we are on exciting envelope number 19 I am gobsap smack myself because I don't know I was going to do 10 of these and now I'm on number 19 but until the um, creativity inside my head sort of stops spewing me ideas we all just carry on as long as you guys are enjoying it right so we're on to number 19 and this is what it looks like we're into blues and pinks today um, and I love this kit that I am using it um, is another one of the ones from chapter one and they do have some beautiful well, all their kits are beautiful so i've combined a little bit of this and a little bit of that and i'll get onto that in a minute with you with the various pages that i've used now um just to have a little look here we've got beautiful pinks we've got lovely blues creams um, very vintagey, botanical, but I've also brought um, a bit of a French theme into this as well. So, as I said, I have combined things a little bit. So we've got some die cuts on the front, a little flower that I've just made, a very simple flower, with some sari silk, a little snippet of lace, and a um, mother of pearl button. Um, and then we've got some butterflies. I have a nice little acetate window there. And if we turn that over, I know I should try the magnet thing, but I've never been a winner with magnets, so I'm still on my Velcro. Um, we open that up like that, and we've got some beautiful French uh, paper there. Oh, sorry. Um, I'm going to put this down so it's easier for you to for me to manage it. Okay, and then on the inside here we have a fancy little fold-out thing that was a variation. On something that I showed you with the inspired by Judy so I've adapted that accordingly so what we have here is we've got a little uh, flap inside the flap we've got a little hidey place for a little journaling card a little journaling card we can close that one up and then we've got another flap for you to do some secret writing over there um, and that goes like that then we open up that side and we've got a little spot here to tuck in another two little journal cards um, on this side again we've got a little flap for another little journal card to hide and another little flap for you to write something or you could stick something else there as well so there's that and then we open it up in the middle oops we've got another little tuck spot over here with some journaling uh, bits and bobs that you can put in there I've met, put stuck a pocket down here and I have stuck in two little tags that I've just um, put some sorry and stitched around let's go in there and then um, this is the sort of adaption that I've made if you open up the first flap on each side what we have is we have a secret spot these are the two journaling cards you saw earlier um, and on the inside we've got a secret place to journal another little pocket with a couple of goodies in there um, and I even uh, managed to put a little strip on there and you could actually tuck those in there if you wanted to so I'll leave them there for the moment um, so that folds back down like that uh, we pick that up and fold that down and we pick that up and we fold down so there we go and then we oh I never really get this right tuck in the sides tuck in the bottom and there you have it just like that all right so that's what we're going to make today I hope you're going to join me and um, work through it as I do as well 
All right, so let me talk about what you're going to need today as far as papers are concerned. So we'll just put that to the side for the moment and grab the papers we're going to use today. Now, the papers, as I said, are from Chapter 1 and they are absolutely stunning. Uh, it's my new fave. So um, here we have a sheet. This is from the Strawberry Garden kit um, and I have printed this out, I think slightly smaller than what um, they're meant to be. I think I did it at 79% if I'm not right, not wrong. <laughs> okay, so there we go, that I've printed out. Um, this is on a thicker paper, so um, I've printed this out on 200 grams because the journal cards and I don't want to back them on anything to add to the bulk. All right, so that's what I've done there. Um, then for the inside page, um, this is standard, I think this is a 100 gram paper. Um, I have used the printing um, methods I was showing you and how to make the best out of your digitals. And I have used this from part of the kit um, and enlarged uh, the one little notelet that they had. So I've made that fit a page. So it has expanded, but it's still very clear. Um, and on the other side, I've um, just used a standard page, which is in part of the kit in there. So that's the bit we're going to fold up and use for the insert. Um, and then this is the page from a the French Salon kit, which is stunning, beautiful collage page that I've used for the inside of the envelope. And I'm going to show you how to position this to make use of some other bits on here in your actual project as well today. And on the other side of this, I have again printed um, one of these notelets and I've expanded that. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll put the link in on how to make the most out of your digitals and then you can follow along um, on how to do this yourself. So this is what we're going to use for the outside of the envelope. I have left the border on here, which is not a problem. Um, because we're going to cut around um, using a template I'm going to show you today. All right, so there's that. And then what I've done is I've just printed out um, the ephemera page that goes with the Strawberry Garden kit, which is really pretty. Um, and then I've printed out uh, the tags as well. So how beautiful are those? Absolutely stunning. And again, I've printed this on some card so that it's um, firmer and not too flimsy. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm absolutely loving this French blue, strawberry, pink and cream um, colour combo today. So that's what we're going to do. And I really need to make a journal out of this. Okay, so let's get to the beginning. Now, I think the only thing I need to cut out when I get to that point will be that over there. But I won't do that right now what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the actual envelope itself so the piece of paper you will need um, will be this one here with the French um, collage on the back so that's the one we want to use from the off so I'll just put those aside for the moment okay so we're going to use this and the first thing I did was, because it had a, a fold line and it's meant to be like a little notelet thing that you use, I folded on that fold line because I wanted to marry it up with the fold line um, of my envelope and not have that in the middle of the design. So it would look all part and parcel of what we're doing. So that's what I suggest you do first. Go and get that um, fold line, marry it up. It doesn't have to meet at the end. You're worrying, I'm worried more about having that in the middle and then just take something to uh, your nail a knife bone folder and make sure that you've got that um, in place so there we go because i really like this design okay so we've got that there now what i want to do is i want you to look for where you've got this on your um envelope and make a mental note of that because this bit we're going to use for this uh, bit here we are going to use so that's going to go to the top so when I place my template down I want to make sure that that I keep my template as low down as possible now as far as the template is concerned um, 
will be the last one I, I grab, yeah? <laughs> okay, this is the template that I use and I've made um, over here. Now I've written in the middle here, it is 10 and a half centimeters that way, 10 and a half centimeters that way. And if I put that in inches, let me tell you what it is. Um, you're looking at four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Um, and then it's three and um, three quarters for the flat bit. And this is an inch, an inch all around. And I think this is an inch and a quarter. Yeah, inch and a quarter. All right, so that's what I've done, if you're interested. Okay, so we need to, this is going to be the front of our envelope. That's going to be the back. Um, so we want to remember that we want that bit over there. So we want to take this to the, the bottom end of our envelope. Let's just see over here. Yes, that's perfect. And now... We don't want to get that over there. Hold that down and remember to marry up that crease with that line there, with your fold line. So that does need to come over a little bit. So it's matching up there, matching up there, and it's going to just blend into everything. We're all right there and we're good to go. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Now I'm working on um, sorting out these templates. So... Um, don't worry about that okay then I love templates I just take my pencil I draw right around uh, mine are printed um, out and I've used thick 300 gram cardstock you can use a cereal box it doesn't matter um, just because it the thicker it is the easier it is to draw around and it just makes your life easy okay so there you can see this is on the fold line there and everything else is how it should be. So I'll just put that to the side and you can just take your knife, your scissors, whatever it is, and just trim that off quickly. So. Okay, so there we've had that all cut out. Okay, so everything's fine here. Now, I haven't rounded the corners off there. I'm just going to take my little corner rounder. Um, you can do it with your scissors. So, nothing wrong with that. Um, those, that one there, I'm going to work it uh, in with my rounder. So, I'll just have to do that there. And the same over here. Okay, so there we have it all good to go. And you can do these as well if you want. Okay, so that's all sorted. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Out my box. Right, so everything is sorted here. And as you can see, we've got this beautiful bit printed on the back. I prefer to print both sides because I don't want to make it overly thick and line it out. Um, this is just quite a thin uh, 100 gram paper I think I used here, standard paper. So that's all good to go. So now what we want to do is we want to fold along our line. So we've got this fold in place already, so that's perfect. And now we want to just line up and do our other fold. So take a ruler, um, match up best you can. Just check I'm... I'm in frame here for you. I'm just going to line that up on my board um, and then I'm just matching these folds over here and I'm going to just run my bone folder over it and the same on that side and then the same along here you don't have to do it like this, but I usually mess about and then I wish I had done it like this. So, um, Okay, so there we go. We've got our other flaps ready. So let's just turn that one in then. And that one. What's 
that's it. And then this last one. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. And then just the side. And this template's lovely to use for um, any kind of envelope. I mean, look how what a lovely size that is. I really like that size. Okay, so um, perfect for journals, our journals. Okay, this one's just slightly skew, so I just want to line it up. And, you know, that happens, so it's easy when it's... There we go, so we've got that. How we want it now, perfect. So if I look there, it's ever so slightly narrower. Um, so that is just perfect. Okay, there we go. Alright, so this is how the front's going to look. We're going to have it like that. Um, and what we need to do now is we need to create a little framed window there. Now, um, as you can see with this one here, um, I've used, I didn't have a square, um, I've just used what I have. You can make a circle, you can use whatever you want. Um, in fact, when I do it now, I'm going to move it over slightly more. Um, so just be mindful of which side you want to put the flowers on, which is the flap, short flap side here. Um, and just make sure that your uh, frame is slightly over to the right. So I'm going to join you in a second. Um, and quickly just position that. Um, if you don't have a die cut machine, just um, take anything you want. So for example, you want to use um, the lid of your Distress Oxide, you could put that down there, draw around that, um, take a craft knife um, or anything, make a hole in the middle of it, cut a little cross or something and then you can use your scissors and cut around that you don't have to use a die cut you could use the base if you wanted a bigger size you could use the top if you wanted a smaller one so use the things you have that's perfect because the corners are rounded and would make a great um a shape to do okay so um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try that instead of a die cut machine today and let's just have a go. So let's see, do I want to, um, for this one, I think that would, the lid, I think this is too big for what I want today. I think I'll use um, the lid. So let's try that. So this is like impromptu um, <laughs> way of doing things, right? So I'm going to position it about there I think yeah and I'm going to very carefully just use my pencil and go around now I use your pencil because if you do like I've just done and draw where you don't want to it's easy just to rub it out okay so there we've got our actual frame um, and now what I suggest you do is invest in one of these I got it at a hardware store um, and you can get them. This is an old one, but I've got these ones. Um, they're just Stanley knives. So this is the more modern Stanley knife. Um, and I think I've got four or five of these in a pack. Um, really useful tools. Just be careful if you're not um, used to using one. Right, so what I would suggest you do is take the knife and make an X in the middle. Okay, now... You can start folding these back a bit just so that you can get inside. If you're going to use your scissors, this would then give you the opportunity to get to the edge there and cut around. Okay, like that. Or you can use your knife. So this is just an example of how you can do this without a die cut machine and I'm sure all of you use distress ink so um, it should be easy enough to do okay I'm gonna chop this off so I'm not dragging these things around just go really carefully around the corners with your scissors because you don't want it to tear the paper or anything like that okay just stick to that line 
Anyhow, there we go. Look at that. We didn't even use, I didn't even have to get off my seat. <laughs> okay, now I have got a little bit of pencil there. And because it's pencil, we can just rub it out. So that's easy enough said. Um, and I am going to distress that a little bit with my ink. So there we go. How perfect is that? You would never have said. Okay, so the distress ink I'm using today is um, antique linen. Um, these are such gentle, uh, soft shades. I don't want to go darker. You can to use whatever you choose. But for me, this is my all-time fave this shade it has a much um, gentler I do use vintage photo as well just depends right, so there we go happy with that um, you can see it's got an ever so light if you can see um, distressing but there I just want to do a bit more there Okay, so there we're good to go. So that's going to be the front of our envelope. And now what we want to do straight away is go and stick down your acetate. Now, somebody asked me the other day, they don't eat cakes. Um, that is a shame. <laughs> um, but if you don't, then you need to be visiting somewhere where you can get acetate sheets. Now, you can get it in a roll or you can get it in sheets. Um, I've got a roll here because I don't eat enough cake that I can for all the crafting I do. Um, and you can cut this off according to the size you need. So um, what I suggest is get hold of a Sharpie pen. I'm trying to grip it here. One of the, I'm oh, sorry. One of these um, and just mark because when you lift this up, you'll lose the spot and it's clear. So it's not so easy. Just make some marks here quickly about the size of the acetate and I went a bit wide there so I wanted up to this level there just to give me an idea of the area I need to cut out okay because I have learned once I lift it up then I don't know where to go right, so there we go, there we go. like that now on Amazon this is called um what does it say? Let's see. It's saying Merry Christmas. Oh, there we go. Um, it's called a Vindar cake collar, 16 centimeters, but definitely a cake collar. All right, so go and have a look on there. Right. So we've got our little um, acetate window. So now what we want to do is just turn that around and two bits one you want to run some glue fairly close to the edge and then you also want to put some on the end here like that okay that way we know it's going to stick and not lift at any point okay so stick that down and make sure you don't go near the uh, fold lines so there we go that's perfect and our window is in okay nothing wrong with that okay so we're going to leave this to dry at this point i'm going to just put this to the side um, and we want to get on with the middle bit because i want to i'm going to finish off with this last um so we'll do that um in a minute so grab your sheet of paper now that um, you're going to use for the middle so i've got this blue bit there and this uh, coffee stain doily one from the kits on the other side so um, taking it right to the borders hopefully you can do that now obviously this is um, geared for an A4 sheet of paper um, you might be using a letter so that might be slightly different um, just go and check it out the piece of paper in case you wanted to know um is 39 and oh, 39 29.75 um, centimeters by uh 21 centimeters and if i take my bent <laughs> ruler uh that would be eight and a quarter by 
other side, Angela. They're 11 and 3 quarters. So that's the size that I'm using. I don't have any other size. No. Take our piece of paper. And what we want to do is we want to, I need to just, it's not quite 30, so I need to divide this in three. Um, and I want to just, I've got the same amount on each side here. And then what I want to do is um, move that up a bit. You want to take your pencil and just mark at the 10 centimeter mark and the 20 centimeter mark like that. Okay. And then what we want to do is we want to uh, just run our bone folder down the middle here. Okay. And on that side as well. So just make sure you, you can use your scoreboard. Um, but I'm not going to try to use as few gadgets as possible today so people who don't have them can see how to do this. All right, so there we go. And excuse the fold line in the middle. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking there. The previous envelope, probably. Right, so you want to just get that. Make sure you're very accurate with meeting these two up there and then just make sure that you fold that down um, and we want to do the same on this side make sure that you get that folded over want to open it up like that and then we want to fold it in half in half and again just be quite precise okay just want to make sure yeah pretty good there and then take your bone folder and just make sure you Give it a good crease. Okay. All right. So we've got that there like that now. Now we're going to take this corner. Um, no, are we? <laughs> we're going to fold this over like that first. Leaving my marbles today. And then we want to give that one a, a bend right down. Not quite to the end. Leave a little bit of a gap like an eighth of an inch um, and bend that one down like that and then take that one and then just gauge it um it's about a that there so i've just sort of kept it as even as i could on that side and then we want to turn this side over. So let's just open that up there. Make sure it's all matching on these corners. Like that. And then same thing. Almost. Um, now don't do it too far because it gets caught when you're um, folding the envelope um, all together. So, um, I just want to see how far I did that one to keep it similar, like that. Yeah, and there we go. And we've got that one, like that. Okay, it's a shame that I folded the blinking thing in the middle. I don't know what I was thinking. Right, let me just try and get that out. Okay, so we've got a bit over there, we've got that bit over there, and it doesn't really matter which way you want to fold it, so we'll go with that way. 
All right, I hope everybody's got that now um, and you know what you need to do. Okay, so there's the base of our um, insert and that is going to end up being stuck into our envelope. So we won't see that with the uh, tags once they're in, but obviously I wouldn't send it something out like that. I just don't want to go and print another one <laughs> at the moment. Right, so let's just make sure everything is nice and flat as we can have it. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Now, you can put a little magnet in there if you want to. I'm not great with doing the magnets. I never win. I need to go watch a tutorial on that. Um, so, there we go. So, that's all great. You could put a Velcro bit over there as well. All right, so that's going to fit really nicely um, into our window there like that. Um, and we are then able to go and close everything up, obviously, with the sides. Um, like that, like that, and like that. And there you have it. Now, what's going to go? We're going to have a little picture stuck in here. So um, let's just remember that that's actually the front. So when we do that, it actually needs to be this way. <laughs> All right, so you won't see that because we're going to put some stuff in there. All right, so we'll do that now. All right, so that's the way up that I want it. Um, well, I've got it there. Okay, so just make sure you've got this at the top, like that. Um, and for purposes of your window, <laughs> let's just eyeball this here we want to see more or less okay so let's take a ruler and we've got two and a quarter centimeters which is like let's get my other ruler from downstairs that's not bent three quarters of an inch in that way all right so that's just a guide Okay, let's make sure that's on the top it is we're good to go so we'll just put that over there so now what we want to do is um sorry um is we want to start decorating this bit here and i told you earlier that you um you want to keep the piece uh this piece so just going to cut that out quickly we won't need the whole thing we pretty much need half of it but i'm gonna have this like this and we said before i forget that we wanted to just know for the myth for purposes um so i'm gonna do it a bit longer that's the bit where i know the window goes to okay so um we're going to have that bit over there and i'm going to uh cut it off probably over here just like that so that's going to go over there like that yeah um i'll keep that bit Right, and then we want to um, cut out a little bit, which I haven't done yet, which I was going to show you. On this sheet over here, I'm going to use that bit there. Alright, so just put a little bit of the uh, Distress ink on the sides of that, like that. Now, what's going to happen here is... This is going to be positioned like that. This I'm doing just below. So we want to move that up a bit and have that like that. And then we're just going to stick on some butterflies. So these came from uh, the butterfly and peacock kit. So we're going to have one over there and one sort of like that I'll bring that one down a bit 
So we're going to stick that all down quickly. And that's going to be what's in our little window. So let's do that. The other way. And that's our little window done. Okay, so I'm going to just put it a little bit lower. So I think the window is a little bit smaller and that looks lovely. So I'm happy with that. Um, okay, and then where's my... So this is the flap, so that's the top. A wider bit there for our flowers. And we are going to stick that down in there like that. Okay, so let's just get that stuck down. Um, so just put some glue on the edge like that Okay, so there we go. Just keep mindful. I had to pull that all off now. Um, mindful of the flap and where you are actually moving that over. Okay, so we're happy with that. Everything, the flaps lift up. So it all looks good. Okay, so let's go and um, decorate the rest of this now. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to stick a little heart on the front here and just don't extend it beyond the flap that oh well, i suppose you can it's not going to be a crisis um let's stick that down over there there we go just make sure there's no glue on the underside there okay Right, so we've got the little heart over here, and then um, I opened that up like that, and I have a little pocket going on here. I've got to stick down all the pockets on that section. So let's do that quickly. So the first one that you're gonna to wanna to need is um, a piece of paper that we used earlier. Um, from our cutoffs from the, the envelope itself and this bit here I'm going to stick down right there that over there okay so that's great and then just using a bit of distress ink again just for the edges And then we can stick that down right over there. Just so hold it at the top um, for those of you who are new. Um, otherwise, you can be like me and stick the things <laughs> the wrong way around. That's happened often. So now I do that. Um, right, so that's going to go over there. And we've got our nice little pocket. And then what we want to do is I've got one of the labels from the sheets. Um, and I'm going to stick that. Uh, just over the side over here um, yeah I'm just thinking which side I prefer okay so let's just stick that down stick that over there like that and we'll just put a little scrap got a little scrap of paper here And I'm just going to stick that over there, bring in some pink. And I'm just going to take one of these bits of um, script. And I'm going to just stick that like that. There we go. So there's that pocket done. And then over here, I'm going to make another pocket. 
with another one of these cards just make sure it says strawberry make sure it's the right way up um, this should fit nicely over there so again I'm gonna stick that down Okay, and get that close there. We don't have much space, so we've got to just be mindful of that. So there's that one there. Um, and then on this side, we're going to take this little card, which is so pretty, um, and do the same on that side. Okay, so we're going to stick that over here. All right, so that's all sorted. Nothing else to do there. So what we can do is we're going to quickly open these flaps up, just the two outer ones. We're going to fold that down like that. And then what we are going to do is we're going to decorate the inside there. So what I did was, I'm just checking in here so I get it all the same, is take another piece of the scraps you were using earlier so here's the other piece of that um, and the same process just gonna trim off the edge here it gives you a good chance to use all these scraps at the same time and not make more so i'm just going to trim that and cut straight across um, and just see how much I want to just slightly in again uh, from the sides. So you don't want to inhibit those. Now, I actually would like it this way, I think. But, yeah, I think I'm going to do there and there. So that's cool. So we we'll just put some of that on just to sort of balance the border look on it. That's great. So hold it at the top. Okay. And then there we go. So we've got our little pocket in there and then what I did was um, and this is just me getting ridiculously involved with this thing um, I have used these two strips which were on there and I have stuck one straight across um, so you can do that and we'll just mark the spot okay and I'm gonna stick that down just to give it a little bit of excitement like that so we'll do that quite close to the top there we go and then I just took a little stamp so I've taken one of the stamps that they do which are so adorable in so many sizes they're small big medium everything um, and I'm gonna just put that at an angle like that okay you don't need to do all the stuff but there we go then I just wanted to add a little bit of a finishing touch to this side so same thing here got the spot chop that off um, you don't have to use this as a tuck spot but um, you can use it just as like a finishing touch but I have done so um, so we just glue that down sorry over there like that okay so we can now get finished with this so we've got that there let's go and put our bits and bobs in the various compartments so um, on this side I had two tags a creamy one and a, a blue one so that's going to go there and I thought I'd just tuck in one of these cards with a bit of green now these that we're going to go into the sides I'm going to just stick them over there like that okay so we can close that up we can put down our flaps 
um, like that. Um, and then I have just put in two tags like that, sewn on some sari, and I'm going to just tuck those in there like that. And then I've got a label and a couple of other bits and bobs which I thought could go in there. Just like that. Oops, a bit high. And then I've got these two little cards that I thought could just fit in over there like that. Okay, so there we've got everything for that side. So we're going to put that side down, we're going to put that side down. Um, and then we're going to push in the sides. Um, we're going to put over that bit like that. And then what we're going to do is put on some Velcro spots. So let's do those quickly. If you're a fan of magnets, please put those on. Um, I... I use these, <laughs> oops, wrong side, um, a lot. It's easy. All right, so we got one there. And one there. And one just on top. And that finds the right spot for it then. That's why I do it like this stuck to my finger okay right so let's get this down all in push that down hold that down and the top okay and then push that down like that okay so it's all together now right so we can get to the front there we go the front so First thing I did was I had cut out one of the little hearts and that's going to go right over here. So let's put that down. Now do be mindful of the edges and where it will stick over a little bit. So just be mindful of that. So Okay, so we want that over here. Just like that. Um, and then what I did was I had these three die cuts. So these are the three I'm using in the different colors. So it's just a case of sticking those on. So I do prefer my other glue for doing this for the one with the little syringe nozzle, but I'm mindful of the time now, so we just want to get this done and not too long. So there's the first one and we want to just push that one straight up like that. And I did have it sticking whoops, ever so slightly over the top there like that. Okay, so just press that all down. And then I took the blue one, put that to the side. So we want to just stick that down like that we want to just put that to the side slightly like that and then the pink one we want to just do on the other side just sort of leaning slightly over okay Okay, so that one's going to go like that and just like a little bit further down. There we go, like that. Okay, so that's really pretty. Now all that we need to do is, um, I had a little scrap of paper like that. Um, and on that I stuck on a little bit of script. Me and my script. Okay, so we'll just have that coming down a little bit there, like that. And a little bit of that. <laughs> and then we'll stick that down. And we'll just put it ever so 
just on the edge there. And the very last thing is just this little flower that I've made with a little button on. Now, um, I did use this glue earlier. Okay, so there we have it. Um, and that's going to go on the top just like that. So what I haven't done on this one, and for reasons um, that I get people saying, well, they don't have a sewing machine, I have not stitched around the frame here. Um, I have not used my die cut machine. I've tried to keep this basic. Um, and I've shown you the alternative today. So we have got one where I've stitched around and that's for people that want to do that or have a sewing machine, but it's not required and I have not done it on this one. I have used my die cut machine here with a frame, but we just used the top of the Distress Oxide and there's nothing wrong with that. So I don't think it distracts from it not being stitched. You know, it looks just as cool um, without it, I think. So there we've got our alternatives today. We've got both of these. All right, so it just shows you, you can make use of what you have. Um, and I hope that you you'd give it a go. If you're a new person starting out here, you don't need to have lots of fancy things. Um, I didn't have a bone folder until about three months ago or four months ago. I used a butter knife, so all my nails. So, you know, you can use whatever you have. Don't feel obliged to have to have piles of tools. Those will come in time, trust me. You know, there are other ways. You don't have to have a scoreboard. You can, I did it today without one. So that was just a little um, example of how we can go about doing these things without the fancy tools. And it's still going to look pretty. I hope you've enjoyed uh, creating this project or following along with me today. And I do hope that you give it a go. Please feel free to share it um, with me. I've got my contact details for um, emails. Um, Instagram um, or any other platform um, that you might belong in a Facebook group tag me and I'd love to see how it turns out I love seeing what you guys make and create and your version and interpretation of it so it's always lovely to see thank you so much again for your kindness um, and lovely support I really couldn't do this without you guys so thank you so much and stay awesome and I'll see you all again soon bye bye